Before we start this video, a large thank you to Miles, Cemetery Knight, Monwald, Dial Seat, Obscurus, 12, Lyric, Riff Raff, Ningian, my deepest apologies as I'm definitely not pronouncing that right, but thank you very much, my friend, and Thomas for their support on Patreon. I hope you guys enjoy the video. And a tremendous thank you to Halo Burner for their continued support to the channel on Patreon. It is noticed and greatly appreciated, my friend. I hope you enjoy the video. Hello guys, today we're going to add input queuing. So just to show you an example here, if I go into the game and go to do a combo, I have to really mash the RB button, really get this to go off. Like if I tap it a second too early, it won't do a combo. What we want it to do is when you tap it a second early, we want it to remember it and then basically do the combo as soon as it's able. This is called input queuing. So let's go over to our player input manager and this is really going to help the feel of the game. Uh, it won't make it feel as clunky. You can go ahead and test this too, it's an Elden Ring and all the Souls games. Very important part, very small detail that uh, most people don't even notice, but it makes the game feel a lot nicer. So I'm going to make a header for queued inputs over here, and I'm going to start by making a serializable field bool, and we're just going to make a queued version of every input. So we'll start off doing our B and RT, uh, because that's all we really have right now that's required to do. So we'll make one called bool QRB input. Now go to your player controls and find your right bumper input, and all you want to do is just duplicate it. And I'm just going to name mine uh, QRB, and that's it. Now we can exit this and save it, and now we can use this. Now normally, we would go down here on unenable, and we would make this turn a bull to true, yada, yada, yada. Um, we're going to not make it turn a bull to true when you press this button, but we're going to make it run a function. So I will show you what I mean. Let's make a comment here for queued inputs to keep it nice and clean and separated. We're going to say player controls dot player actions dot QRB dot performed plus equals i equals greater than, and now this function doesn't exist yet, but I'm going to type it anyway. We're going to say q input, and autocomplete just ruined that. So we're going to say q input, and we're going to make this require a reference, and the reference is going to be this specific input, which is qrb, because again, this is qrb.performed. Now, I'm going to get to why we're using a reference uh, immediately, but let's go write this function. If you don't know what a reference is or what the difference between passing by reference and passing by value is, you can check it out by uh, a quick Google search or YouTube search. But I will give you a very simplistic explanation as soon as I write this out. So, private void, Q input, reference, you can use that reference keyword, bool Q input. So, basically, reference means you're passing an actual bool and not just the value of it. So, if I pass just a bool, it's going to basically just take true or false. But I'm passing a specific bool so I can reference this specific bool after I've passed it. So otherwise, you're passing the value, just the true or false, but here I'm passing a specific reference to a specific variable. So I'm going to make a uh, comment here, reset all queued inputs, so only one can queue at a time. And then if every time you add more to this, just go ahead and set them to false. So do it with all of them right away. Now what you want to do is take the one that you did pass, so your reference, and then turn that to true. And obviously, when we're pressing the queued right bumper, it's going to pass QRB, and that will change our QRB to true. So I'm just going to make a few here uh, and comment them out for in the future when we add them. So RT, LB, and LT. All right, so down here, comment. Check for any UI windows open as well. You don't want to queue an input for combat if you're in a menu, like your equipment menu or whatever. So that is it to do when we come back here in the future after making our UI windows. Then we're going to say if the player is performing an action, if you want to do it for jumping too, you can do that. So you can uh, kind of do it with a jumping attack, a jumping heavy attack, or a light attack. Um, so if you are performing an action or if you're jumping, then queued input is equal to true. So queued input being the reference we pass is equal to true. So the specific queued input we're passing, we're turning to true. So again, if we scroll back up, you can see we're passing a reference, a specific bool. And if we go up to where we're pressing right bumper, you can see that queued right bumper performed is passing Q right bumper input the bool. So that's the reference we're passing. I want to be very clear on that. All right, so this is it right here again. Now if we go down, we need to make two more functions. So we have a way now to disable all other queued inputs and only turn on the input uh, most recently that we pressed to queue up. Next, we need to basically uh, create a timer. We want to attempt that new input for as long as the timer is above zero. So let's say you want a queued input to last for 0.3 or 30% of a second. Then we're going to attempt to press right bumper again for uh, 0.3 seconds. And if in that time we can perform an action like a combo, we will do it. So let's go up here. Let's make a float for queue input timer. Can initialize it at zero. 
and then let's make a float for the default time of each input queue. And if you want to get really technical with this, you could give every individual input type its own timer if you want different ones to have bigger or smaller windows. But I'm just going to use a general timer for all, and the general default time will be 0.35. That seems to work out pretty nice for me in testing, but you can change that. Depends on how fast you want your combat to be, how quick your attack animations are, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Gonna make that a serializable field. That's supposed to be a float, not a bool. Whoops. Okay, so that looks good. Now we can come down here. And right now, where we have this comment where it says attempt this new input for X amount of time, I'm going to simply set the input timer to the default amount of input time. So when you press it, the timer starts, goes up to 0.35 in my case. Now we got to start counting it down. And also we need a private bool for is the input queue active? Because if it's active, we got to start counting down that timer and we got to keep attempting to use the input. So let's make it a serializable field. You don't have to, but if you want to see it in the inspector that's working, I'm going to do it for the sake of the video. Now what you want to do is say input queue is active is equal to true. And now we move on to our next function where we start actually counting it down. So right below that, I'm going to make a private void handle all queued inputs. And actually, um, now that I'm thinking about it, that should be the name of the last function. This one's just the timer, so I will rename that in a second. Um, so we're going to say if queue rb input, we're simply going to say rb input is equal to true. And then do the same thing with all your other inputs, lb, lt, rt, whatever you want to queue up. Basically, as long as the queued version of that input is true, we're constantly resetting that input to being true as well. You want to check to see if you're dead. If you are dead, you can just return. No need to run any of this. And now we need the function to actually um, run this and basically count out the timer. So I'm going to change the name of this to process queued inputs. That's a better name because it's just processing the input that you are attempting to press. Handling all queued inputs will be what we call on the update function uh, the same as our other inputs. The keyword there is handle. That's what we use for all of our inputs. Handle switch left one input, for example. So we're just going to say if, apologies for that noise, the plow is going up the road. We're going to say if input queue is active, we want to say if the input queue timer, what did I call that? If input default, no, queue input timer is greater than zero. We want to say queue input timer minus equals time dot delta time. So it's just going to count down until it gets to zero. So we're going to say Q input timer minus equals time dot delta time. And then we're going to say process queued input. So we're going to keep trying to press that basically. Now I'm going to make a comment here. So it's very, very clear. While the timer is above zero, we're going to keep attempting the input until we do it. So Basically, your queued input will last for 0.35 seconds, and for 0.35 seconds, it will try to do the input for you. So if your timing isn't perfect, it will just basically give you a margin for error. You can do it 0.35 seconds early, which is good. Now, otherwise, you want to reset all queued inputs. So the same thing you do up here, just copy and paste that. You could make a little function if you wanted to for resetting the inputs, and then just call that function instead in both those places. It's up to you how much you want to uh, decouple it. So I'm going to say Q RB input is equal to false. And then we're going to say input Q is active is equal to false. So let's test this now before we move on. Um, I'm also just going to come down here and say Q input timer is equal to zero just to reset it. Okay, so now we're going to call this on the handle all inputs up here. So right below handle switch left weapon input, I'm going to say handle queued inputs. And now we save. So if I jump back into the project here now, I'm going to try to combo. I'll hit the player input manager so you can see it. So when I press the right bumper, you can see for a split second, the input queue is active. You can see QRB is active. And what happens is, is now I can press the right bumper attack button 0.35 seconds earlier, and it will remember and it will do the combo for me. But you can see if I press it right away, it won't do it because it doesn't last long enough to get to the point where I am allowed to do a combo. So this just makes doing combos uh, a lot easier because it feels more fluid and responsive and not so stiff and weird. So now that we got that done, let's do the same thing for the right trigger so we can do it with heavy attacks and heavy combos as well. And this just doesn't work for combos. Let's say if you want to uh, do a light attack after breaking out of a roll, then it will work the same way. Or if you want to do a rolling attack when you're in mid-roll, it will remember your cue and do the same thing. So this has a lot of use cases. You could also do it for rolling if you wanted to and add an input queue for the roll itself. I don't like having it for a roll specifically, not sure why, just in testing it felt 
better not to do that. I prefer only having it for the attacks. It's like the quick slot items. I don't like having it for those either, but you can place this wherever you want. You can add a queue for whatever input you want. So do the same thing. Duplicate the right trigger uh, in your player controls there. Go ahead and make a bool for the right trigger and then on comment everywhere you've made uh, one for the right trigger. And then we're going to copy and paste basically everything to do with RB, change it to RT. And uh, yeah, it's just it. The logic is identical here. So you can add as many of these as you want. It's very simple. This is a very simplistic version of a queued input system. You can get uh, really technical with this, but for a simplistic use case like the one in Elden Ring, this really does the job. And I don't see any reason to modify it or make it more complex. But if you want to, you feel inspired to do so, definitely go ahead and do it. So you can see here now it is definitely working for the right trigger as well. So now I'm just going to go over, I'm going to do an attack and then hit it a little bit early. You can see, yep, the queue was active for a second. The timer went down and it was queuing the right trigger input. So basically makes attacking with the right trigger and right bumper a lot easier so there you go guys that is a very simple but very powerful system it adds a lot to the game in my opinion it makes it feel a lot nicer now there's something i want to go over real quick before i go um a person in discord mentioned there was a camera issue and uh it turns out that the issue they thought existed was an action issue but because of that i found an issue so you can see here in nephilim when i go forward the camera catches up to the player but it takes a second now i covered this in elden ring so it's in the project the problem was I forgot to serialize the variable on the video, so I'm sure a lot of you actually probably did do that, but I didn't. So when you move, the camera follows you instantly. So what you want to do is go to the player camera here, and you can also, if you want to, take away the multiplication by time dot delta time under camera smooth speed, uh, but you don't have to. So you want to serialize this variable and then change this number. So this wasn't serialized before, at least on my end, camera smooth speed. And the higher this number is, um, the slower it's going to send her back to the, to the character, especially if you take away the multiplication by time by delta time. So I'll take it away and just show you. So now if I take this away, we're not multiplying by time by delta time. It's on one right now. So you can see like it's it's a second to get back to the character there. There you go. It's, it's very slow. So if you put it to like 0 0.3, let's say, or 0 0.2, you can see there's a bit of delay. So it, it gives the camera a lot more life. You definitely want to use that. It feels a lot nicer. Tweak the number until it's something that you feel like you enjoy, but it's a cool little effect. Uh, and if you're going to keep the multiplication by time by delta time, then this number is probably going to be a little bit different than it normally would. Uh, so what you want to do is, if you just put this back here, I'll just show you an example for in my project. I'll minimize this. So if I go over here now and I were to change this, so I'll say 1. You can see it's pretty much following me instantly. Um, and if I change this to something like 10, 13, 15, it's a bit slower. If I change this to 20, you can start to feel that now, so there's, there's a big difference. Now, in this use case, I'm going to be honest, I, I'm not sure if using time.delta time is better or not, uh, multiplying it, uh, I mean. So if there's any camera wizards in the chat right now or watching the video, and you want to drop some knowledge, that'd be really cool. I'm not using a multiplication by time.delta time in Nephilim, but I can't recall why I specifically landed on that. If I do find it in my notes later, I will bring it back up. But like I said, if one of you guys know, that's cool. Drop some knowledge in the chat or the comments. Uh, thank you very much for joining me again this weekend, guys. I hope you all have a very lovely weekend, and I will see you in the next one.